you start getting comfortable with. And we used if somebody's average was something that was less than 40. And we said either you'll be assigned a grade of E, or if you're using text, you can either use pass and fail. So you have that database for a class setup. And I hope you can go back, revisit, and make sure you can fill in all the columns, including the different performance for males and females, and as far as the averages are concerned. And there's a video for the same. So today I want to pick it up from what we did, and uh, I want you just to watch for now, because I'll be moving a bit fast. And then maybe once we arrive where we where I disappeared yesterday is where now I can slow down and then we move together. Let's talk about bonus. And we say at this stage, you are in an environment whereby you are supposed to calculate some payment. And with this payment, uh, I will need a new worksheet. Let me call it summary. And summary will basically contain information to do with the, the total bonus. I will also have the net pay. And I want to know how many them. Uh, just a, by the way, I think in this class, you can just have your earphones and uh, concentrate more on your laptop. So whatever I'll be guiding you through, it's something we can all be doing simultaneously. So you don't have to be watching, or maybe if you want to watch, it's up to you. But I would prefer you can just do as I also explained to you uh, step by step. So the essence here is I want to transfer the totals to this new worksheet. And for bonus, we said we're only paying individuals who are able to meet their targets. And the amount they're supposed to receive is 5% of whatever they were able to sell uh, during that period of time. So target, the comma, what should happen? If that's the case, then you give them 5% of whatever they were able to sell. Comma. If they're not receiving the 5%, then give them zero. I, I think for my end, uh, I'm not Hello? in a position to vote. You cannot see my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, sir, we can't see your screen. Confirm once you see something. Not yet. It's yet. Yeah, we are good. I think uh, you can keep me in communication so that uh, uh, you don't just make and forget that uh, I'm having you guys around. 
thanks for that. Uh, so that the the load test can only as long as you understand the drill, you'll always figure out your way with the outcome. But in terms of the first outcome I said is uh, you give the person five percent of whatever they were able to sell that period of time. And if that's not the case, then they will receive zero. We press enter. Uh, for Duncan, they're not receiving the 5%, and this is because the 20 is less than 350. To autofill, you can either drag down or you can double click, but pay attention just to the cursor. And uh, when the cursor is a bit small and dark in color, that is how you know you are autofilling. And we did this since day one. So I'll double click. And now I want the top the summation to be in a different worksheet. So I'll go to the summary worksheet. And for bonus, of course, I'm doing summation. So equal sign and then sum. Okay, if you are struggling to shift between worksheets, you can also use this part for function. So fx always means function. And if you click here, you notice that you can be able to select uh, the different functions that are there. But maybe later is when you can see when we use uh, the field lookup. So it's more or less the same. You can either proceed from function or you can switch between this window up here so that you can switch between worksheets. So equal sign, sum, and we're doing sum of uh, all the bonus amount. If I press enter, I will have the amount reflecting on the second worksheet. Let's talk about net pay. But of course, we have to introduce some logic whereby say, for net pay, we're not paying everyone. But uh, we're only paying individuals who are receiving some bonus. So for net pay, we say we're paying net pay for employees as long as they are, are receiving some bonus. And this now gives you more option in terms of uh, the logic test that you come up with. Uh, so for me, I'll just relate with the bonus. But if you also want, you can relate on zero. If bonus is uh, greater than zero, comma, what should happen? So that means you're entitled to some net pay. So I'll give you. 10%. So I'll give you first the bonus, the amount that you're receiving as your bonus, plus ten percent of whatever you are able to sell. So star is used for to not off. So ten percent of yourself comma what should happen if that's not the case so you see this is zero and if I press enter and auto fill <coughs> you'll notice that now I have uh, some information so I have the net day and also down here, I think I already have the, the summation. So if you do summation, you get this number. And now that I have the summation down here, let's see what if I just want to transfer details from one cell. So I can use equal sign. And then this time I'm not using any function, but instead I want the software to always return to me information on summation, which is in a different cell. So I'll just click on that cell. 
where I want details to be obtained from. And if I press enter, it means I will be getting the same summation from a different cell, but not just uh, by use of, of function. I hope now uh, that is clear. For retain, this is where we have a text kind of results. And we said uh, we're going to retain only in employees who are able to achieve their target. And if they are able to achieve their target, it means they were receiving some bonus. If you're receiving some bonus, it means you are receiving some net pay. And th those are all logics that you can be able to develop. So I'm giving you a, a, a number of ways. And uh, one thing you need to know that in Excel, uh, there's no specific path to follow in order to achieve your objective. As long as you're in communication and uh, you understand what you're doing, you'll always figure out your way. So for comments, I will use the if function. And I will relate with the net pay. I'll say if the net pay is something which is greater than zero, so that means you are receiving something. Uh, comma, what should happen? Uh, the text should be you are retained. If you're not retained, then we'll have another text which says you're fired. And if I press enter and autofill, I'm getting details on either someone or retain. I want the frequency or the number of individuals who are going to be retained. And to get frequency, basically, we just count. But this time you're doing count with the condition because there's some sort of range and in that range you have more than one group so i will say count if and again whenever you see an if then it means there's some sort of logic or a condition needs to be applied so we're counting and the first thing to tell is the range so where we do the counting male and female uh, comment in a class setup so that because of criteria so this is another example we compare the mean so you see in terms of, so if you look at once I click on function, you realize now I can fill in the details here, which says what is the criteria. So this is the second option of still writing functions. And if I introduce now speech marks, I can write mail. And you, and you will notice that every time I'm writing something here, the same is also applied up here. And now the beauty of using this function side is you already know if you're going to get an error or your function is okay. So at the moment, I'm getting a result of zero. Zero. I'm getting zero. This is not the answer I'm expecting because you cannot say in this column comment there is no person who's retained. Again, I'm trying to tell you that depending with the the function you use, you should. Be careful with the answer that you anticipate because sometimes uh, don't trust these computers. 
and maybe who can tell me uh, why am I not getting some results? Who can tell me? Why am I not getting some results? Why am I getting zero? Pay attention to my function. And what we're doing is just count if. So if you understand. And the coin is constant. So I'm getting zero, which means there's no one who's retaining this data set. So what am I missing? Or why am I getting a zero? attention to my function okay so if you notice here with my criteria I have mail but when I was selecting the range in that range the items contain Okay, Maria. so the criteria that you're using, the range, it's not the employee. We are working on the retained or uh, retained area, the range. So you are supposed to pick count if okay. the range is the, the the retained area, the restricted column. Correct. So uh, I'm just emphasizing on the need to pay attention with what you're doing. And sometimes you might be occupied with a lot of these functions. Uh, during the day, or if you, the day is all about spreadsheet, left, right, and center. You may realize that you might miss out something. And the software is there to give you output. So if you didn't know if retains, you're not supposed to be zero. You might find those are part of your formula. So let's pay attention this time. And to get retain, you're using count if, so the function is still okay. So equal sign count if. And we're counting from which range? So under the worksheet employee, we're counting on common, comma, and the criteria we want to retain. So retain it's a text. And you should write exactly how it is in the database so that you obtain the same results. If you write the text as separate, the software might not be able to provide for you the details. So I have 14 of my employees we're going to be retained. Let's talk about, about higher cell, and I think this is where now our class should start. And with higher cell, uh, what you're learning here is with Excel, you can combine more than one functions. And I also want to introduce the concept of absolute referencing. So I hope uh, you had a chance to read. I don't know if I mentioned this before I disappeared but you'll also have a chance to differentiate between absolute referencing and relative referencing. So for ISL, basically, I want to know who among these employees had the sales score, which is the highest. And I will use two functions. So the first function is if, so I'll say equal sign if,
if what if your cell that means whatever you are able to sell that month or that period of time equals the maximum that means if your cell is the highest among a certain range of items so the software wants to know which range so where are we looking for the highest score i would select the entire sales that are there and say if your cell is the one which is highest among these items or these observations then i have to manually close the parentheses and if you close the parentheses then the, all of that becomes your logic test and i'm being guided by the hints down here so i'll press comma and i need to tell the software what should happen if it goes and establish that uh, a certain employee is the one with the highest well so i want the software will return for me a text which says highest and if that's not the case then let the software just return a dash so anything you want the software to return if it's not a number uh, make sure it is enclosed in a speech mark if i execute that uh, i'm being prompted to either allow the software to put parentheses at the end of that function which i will gladly say yes but the first person is not the person with the highest cell i will auto fill i'm getting some higher cell but i have two employees which doesn't make sense there's no way i can have of course there's a way you can have but in this case uh, i would expect to have one person with the higher cell but what if the software returns two two people because there's no way Uh, 761 is higher than 780. So it should be the person with the highest self. But the software is returning to answer. So again, I still emphasize the need to understand your, your data. And here, we will now introduce the concept of absolute reference. So we're getting the, the two results. Software is not concentrating on this column cell. So we need to lock this range. That is from E to E. So of course, go and read on absolute referencing, but I'm giving you a hint or in a layman's. I can explain absolute referencing as. locking a cell how do you lock a cell or a range you lock the range means and between here two you have locked the, the first cell e2 also go and lock the last cell which is e25 so at the beginning of e and between E and 25. So that's the manual way of doing this. Okay. But let's see first if it works. If now I auto fill, I'm getting only one person, and that is faith. And that is so because the uh, hassle was 795. What if I don't want to use the manual? So I think we'll use that in a our next concept but at least what i want you to understand here is how to use absolute referencing because you will need it and also the use of more than one function so not always the case that you just need to have one function in order to achieve a certain objective so you can have more than one function to arrive to a destination so let's talk about Paid period and status. And here I will introduce the concept of VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. But first, let's start with 
we look at and the understanding of we look up here is you have details in this worksheet called ref and if you look here you have status and paid people So assuming a job is to transfer each employee's status to that job for you. And remember again, we said, if this is the nature of your job, you're doing this kind of work every single month, then all you have to do is just use macros, record whatever you are doing. And every month when the data set changes, your job will just be to run or execute the macros. So let's see how we can transfer status of all these employees from this ref worksheet to employee worksheet without necessarily copy pasting. So we will use what you call the VLOOKUP. And the VLOOKUP means vertical lookup. Again, vertical lookup means you have two tables and these two tables, their headings are in the columns. Of course, you can have tables with headings or titles on the rows and there you'll be using what you call H lookup, horizontal lookup. But first, let's understand vertical. But all of them are in the vertical columns. Same case applies in this worksheet called REF. So I have code status paid period, and you can see within this small table, we call it table array, the titles are still on the columns. So when you're trying to combine or connect two worksheets which have titles on the columns, you'll use a concept called VLOOKUP. Let's start with status, and I will start with an equal sign, and then VLOOKUP. Uh, the first thing the software wants to know is a lookup value. Lookup value. And with lookup value, <clears throat> the first thing you need to key in is We call it a uniting factor or the connecting variable. In database, we call it primary key. Here, you'll call it lookup value. And I want, I want you to envision this. Once you understand this, you'll figure out your way even when you're dealing with unstructured data. So if you look at the Excel, picture it as a one-dimensional data because it, you're having your information in a data frame, a row by column. But when you look at database, you'll be doing the same, same thing but the only thing is the wording will change. Instead of talking about lookup value, you'll be talking about a primary key. So lookup value is the value which is common between these two worksheets. Okay. And what is common is look at this table, we have code, and also in the table employee, I also have code. So code is an identifier which can unite both of this worksheet. So that will be our lookup value. So remember to start while working at the employee worksheet. And then I will say FT is the lookup value. So let me just start afresh. Add it. So equal sign, V lookup. The value is FT. Table array is now the table in the worksheet ref. So this entire table becomes the table array. 
where am I going to get these things or these information that I'm looking for? And if you notice, I've selected the table array starting from the lookup value. So I've started from code going to the right. And this is so because Excel doesn't know how to look for data or information on the left side of the lookup value. So when you're selecting a table array, starts from the lookup value going to the right side. And of, of course, this table array is what we need to lock. Remember when you talk about absolute reference. So this is what we need to make sure the software can set chat on. I will have comma, and the software wants to know the column index number. And basically what it means here is information in which column do we want to transform from this table array. So I'll count from code, and I'll say the software doesn't know how to get information from the left side of the lookup value. So we'll have code as the first column, so one for code, and then two for status, and three for paid period. So we're doing for status, so it will be column number two. So code is one, status is two. So I'll write there two. Index is to identify or to locate. Comma, I want the exact match. So I'll select false. And this is binary. You can either select false or you write there zero. You're going to get the same results. So basically one means approximate, zero means exact. And of course one is one uh, to mean yes and zero to mean no. It's more or less the same thing, false, true. And uh, we call them Boolean characters, which are, I think, the only functions that you can use with CAPS so text function that the software can understand what you mean. If I execute that, I'm getting full time. And once I autofill, you realize I'm getting some results, but until some point, uh, I start getting some error. And I think this is what I talked about. So you need to lock that table array. And remember we said there are two ways of locking the table. The manual one whereby you to put the first cell and then highlight the area where you want to have the dollar sign or the absolute referencing. So I'll just select that, that range. And then if you go to F4 key in your keyboard, just press the F4 and you'll realize I have already locked. I have the dollar signs in place. I press enter and auto fill. You realize I'm getting results for all the employees. Because we don't need that. <clears throat> so when you when you're doing for paid period, I think we're going to follow the same drill. But uh, the only thing that will change is uh, is now the paid period is column. So paid period is in column number three in the table array. So equal sign, veil lookup, <clears throat> and uh, the lookup value is still FT, comma, table array is the table under work it ref, so I'll select from code, same drill. This time I want to use the fx part, where I want to use the function part. And I said this is more or less the same thing. 
So column index number, I will have three. Range, I will have zero. And zero means exact match. And you realize the same way I'm keying in some information, I'm getting some results up here. Which directs me on whether I'm about to land into some trouble with some error or uh, I already have some results. So for me, I already have monthly, which means if I press OK, uh, I'll be able to get some results. The only thing is to lock the table array. So I'll just select the part for the range and use the F4 key. And once I press OK, I have monthly. I'll double click to autofill. And now I have results for everyone. I want to give you a small task so that you challenge yourself. And I want you to focus more on H lookup, which is more or less the same thing as VLOOKUP. The only thing is the title, the headings of the columns are in on the rows. That means the table array headings are on the rows. I want us to transpose this table array. Just highlight from code and then copy. And we're going to paste the same table array. Copy the table array. And then paste special. Make sure you click on paste special. And how are we pasting it? You're transposing. And to transpose is to invert it. So I'll click OK. And now you can see the headings are on the roll. your work, you can now use HLOOKUP to do the same. So go to the employee uh, worksheet and clear content for paid period. Just select the entire items on paid period. Then clear content, same applies to status. Okay. And now the instruction is simple. Do the same thing that I've just done and just for two columns, which is the column paid period and column status. But this time the function that you're going to use is the function H lookup. We'll stop there and uh, in our next class, which hopefully it will be at this question. We have in the same master data, and you want to see what if now we shift you from a setup whereby you're just in the role of calculating sales and paying stateless for a multinational companies in more than four regions. I think it's in, in four regions, not more than four, and you have a lot of details, not just as what you are used to. And assuming your job is to make sense out of this data, so this is what we will look at it on and more so will leveraging on what you call pivot table so over the weekend as you anticipate for our class 
go and do your own background check on what you can achieve with pivot table. Let me take a question if there's any or confirm.